Hey there, this is John with gringo.dev. Today, we're going to do something interesting, which is we are going to deploy, redeploy, more precisely, the Stoic Developer, the Stoic podcast app that we have been building in episodes over the course of this channel. And so I'm doing that for a couple of reasons. Uh, essentially, I realized that I wanted to add Vector Search as an episode at some point, and that was not really going to be possible on Vanilla MySQL. And so as a, sort of a two birds, one stone thing, number one, I'm going to show you how to, we deploy that on Railway, which is my preferred way of deploying things out in the wild. And as part of that, we can actually spin up a Postgres instance that has a bunch of extensions and show how all of that works. So I have a few tricks that we're going to go through, start all of that up. But before I continue, um, I'm also starting to record my videos in a separate channel in Spanish as well. And that's partly to improve my Spanish, but also give people who maybe are not so comfortable in English a chance to follow along in their own native language. So I'm hoping that's useful. I'm going to leave a link up here or up here or wherever it actually works to follow along on the Spanish version of this video as well. So if you're more comfortable doing things that way, feel free to follow there and continue. Okay, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so first thing that we're going to do is set up a database. So don't be too tempted by this thing that says provision PostgreSQL. In the past, I think that Railway had images that supported more extensions for Postgres out of the box, like PostGIS, PG Vector, stuff like that. They don't really do that anymore. So it's going to be a, a pretty vanilla database that you get. And, you know, it is a little bit of work to go and recompile the database with those extensions. And then presumably you'd have to do a migration of sorts to the new one. So I would suggest that you just start with an image that has those things out of the box. So if you search for PostGIS, here in your new project dialog, you'll find something that's called Timescale DB plus PostGIS. And this image actually has a lot of really good things inside of it. Um, so if you flip over to the GitHub for it, you can kind of go through here. So it comes from Timescale. So Timescale DB is, a uh, well, it helps you have time series inside Postgres. So that's great for analytics and stuff like that. Um, but they were kind enough to put out a high availability Docker image that has a lot of stuff that you would want to do with Postgres to set up for you. Um, and so they kind of walk through in here a lot of the stuff that's in here, but things that are like most interesting to me are going to be things like uh, PG Bouncer is set up. That's something that you usually have to do on your own. Uh, PG Vector is in here as well, as you can see. Post GIS is in here, and there's a lot of other stuff too. So we're just going to start there and get it set up. And before we continue, if you wouldn't mind, please leave me a like and a subscription. I am what I think is one of the few non-ethically compromised YouTubers in the sense that I don't take sponsorships. I never will. And part of the reason I started this channel, a big part, is that I was tired of seeing younger developers indoctrinated with technologies that were basically just paid sponsorships. So if you wouldn't mind, please support the channel. Give me a like, give me a subscription, leave me a comment of support if you wouldn't mind. And that way we can get the word out and continue sharing good technology decisions with younger developers around the world. Thank you. Okay, so with that done, the next thing that we're going to do is add our Stoic podcast project from GitHub. This is the Stoic developer repo, which is public, by the way, and I'll try to remember to link that in the description. But um, yeah, you just wait 10 seconds to get your database set up after you press deploy. We're going to add our repo to this project as well, and you'll be able to see that it's deploying. This is going to fail, by the way, because there's some stuff that we, we need to set up here, and that's going to be the next thing that I show you is how to set up a, a custom deploy process inside of Railway using some bash scripts and stuff like that, which I will also be adding and, and making public. So um, we're just going to wait here. You can check on the, the logs and all of that stuff, and you can see that this failed exactly the way that I thought it would. Um, I'll show you the exact reason here. Yeah, so there's some uh, some stuff going on that we're going to have to fix, um, and that's in large part because the, uh, the pipeline for setting things up in terms of installing composer dependencies, NPM dependencies, like making all of that work with the project is just a little bit non-standard in the case. Recall that this is a Livewire project with Laravel, and so we're going to have to teach Railway the correct process for setting this up. But the, the good news is it's very flexible if you just have a bash script. So that's what we're going to do next. OK, and so here we are in the Stoic Developer code base. And this is the deploy script that I just added. So you can see it's called deploy.shell. And I'm going to leave a link to this part of the code base in the description so that you can navigate right here and take a look, maybe copy and paste this into your own projects in case it is useful. But just to talk through real fast how it works, 
we have defined a new invariable here that you can set in prod if you want to called maintenance mode. And so if that is set to true, then we run PHP artisan down and that takes your site offline. So in the event that you were willing to tolerate some downtime and needed to use that to do something like upgrade your version on your database or migrate some data or any other type of maintenance, you can just set that environment variable and then you'll go into maintenance mode. And then whenever you're done, you can either remove that variable or set it to false and you will exit maintenance mode. And of course it runs PHP artisan up. And the rest of this stuff is gonna look pretty normal. If you've done a Laravel deployment in the past, we're just installing our composer dependencies, our NPM dependencies. If you're wondering why we have NPM dependencies, it's because there is still a front end with this app. I mean, the, the beautiful thing about Livewire is it makes you feel like you're writing PHP code in the front end, but of course it is still JS under the hood. And so there are JS dependencies that we have to care about when we deploy. So we install those, we build them, and basically we just clear the cache that we had for Laravel, we cache everything again, and then we want to run our database migrations. And importantly, we have this flag called force here. Don't worry when you see that. The only reason that we have that is not to overwrite your database necessarily or anything like that. It's because that by default, when you run migrate in production, it's going to have a prompt that asks you if you, you, if you are sure that you know what you're doing and all of that stuff. And of course, in a continuous deployment environment like we have here with Railway, there's no user sitting there to respond to the prompts. So we just run force here to make sure that it is just running in a non-interactive way and can continue going. So like I said, I'll leave a link to this file in the description. And next we are going to show Railway all of its environment variables that it needs and show it how to find and use this file as part of its deployment pipeline. Okay, and here we are once again in the dashboard. I'm recording this actually after the fact during editing because I realized that I was sharing the wrong window <laughs> the first time I tried. But anyway, so uh, we have this new maintenance mode variable here. You can see that's set to false. Um, and that just means that we have our normal page being served with no maintenance mode whatsoever. The other variables are very normal. If you've deployed Laravel before, not too much to comment on there. One thing to call out here is that we do have our app URL, which is used for like serving assets and stuff. That uh, is pretty normal, but you'll notice that I'm setting that using a railway public domain environment variable, and that just keeps the app URL in sync with any changes that we make to the name or location or whatever of, of the app. Um, and so that's kind of the syntax for using variables inside of these railway environment variables. Similarly, if you go to database URL and you look how I set that, I'm referencing a variable that is internal to the timescale Postgres service here. And so this is the public database URL. It's not called public database URL, just database URL, but it's the TCP public proxy for the database. And the reason that we're using that is because the deploy script runs, of course, at build time. And these internal endpoints that Railway gives you are not available at build time. So in order to run migrations, we need to use the publicly available TCP proxy for the database. The only downside to that is that it might be a little bit more expensive at Railway to use the external endpoints as opposed to the internal ones. But if at some scale that ever became an issue, you could very easily override database URL for your build script and then use the internal one for all other purposes, right? So um, I'll leave that as an exercise to the, the viewer. And, you know, at some point, if Stoic developer actually gets enough traffic, maybe I'll consider doing that myself. But only other thing is app key is something that you can generate locally. Just make sure that you have that set and it stays private and you're good to go as far as your environment variables. They, they can pretty much stay um, as they usually are. And I will try to remember to put an example in the video description before this goes live. Now, if we flip over to settings, a couple of things to call out here. So the first is the build command. So you can see here, this is where I tell it to invoke deploy.sh and make sure that deploy.sh is actually an executable script. So just do the chmod plus x on it so that it has that permission. If you don't, you'll get an, an error. Um, I haven't checked into the repo for Stoic Developer as an executable script, but if you're just copying and pasting, you'll need to make that permissions change yourself. And so that's enough for it to know to go and run that script as part of the deploy process. And because we are using Laravel Octane as the the way of running our Laravel app, um, we have to do this, a custom start command. And I'll include this in the video description as well so you have it. So the only thing to know about Laravel Octane, so normally PHP, like kind of by default, it was always designed with sort of that 
request response cycle, it spins up a new process when a request comes in, that kind of thing. That By default, that's how PHP works, and it, it's very good at that. Uh, some point along the way, Laravel realized that they might be able to wring some more performance out of stuff if they just kept Laravel in memory between requests, much the same way you would get with a, you know, a typical server that runs Rails or Django or, or something like that. Right? And so... Octane exists to perform that. And so you just have to start Laravel a little bit differently if you do things that way. So we're using Roadrunner, as you can see here, which is one of the two supported servers for Laravel, the other being Swool. I prefer Roadrunner just because it has a little bit more compatibility with PHP with not a huge trade-off in performance, but you know, Swool will allow you to go really fast, actually. So it kind of depends on what you want there. Um, we are also using an IP address of 0000, so that external... Uh, services can bind to like basically route requests into our container. And then we use Railway's port uh, environment variable here because we don't know what the port is going to be in advance. There's a few other things that are in this command as well. I'll, um, I'll include it in the description, but that, those are the other things that we got going on here. So yeah, I will um, include that and that is enough to actually get us going. So between the variables and these two ways of invoking things, um, we should now be able to go ahead and check out our app. And by the way, if you choose not to use Laravel Octane, and I may actually choose to turn it off in the near future, we will see, uh, you should just be able to take this out and everything will just run. I, I believe Railway is smart enough to just run Artist and Serve on normal apps that aren't using Octane. So let's go check out the app. Okay, and here we are. So I know this is an empty dashboard, but it is all working. I was able to log in and all of that. And I think I'm just gonna port over all of the data by hand after I, I publish this video and just migrate the main domain to point to, to point to Railway instead. There were like three episodes and I think I was the only user account, so it shouldn't take me too much time. Um, but yeah, the good news is everything seems to be working. You can see it's running off the Railway domain that I was showing earlier. And so, yeah, we have a full stack Laravel Livewire application up and running in prod. So I hope this is useful. If you guys have any comments, please, uh, or questions, please leave them in the section below. And if you got any value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing because I do really enjoy just getting the feedback that this is the, the stuff that people want to see and that the content that I'm making is useful to the, the world at large. So if you could do that, I appreciate it. And let me know if you have ideas for stuff that you would want to see next in part, I think, five of uh, the Stoic Developer or really any other topics that you would like me to cover. So with that, I'm going to sign off. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you soon.